Hi. In the previous video we discussed the schemas of overvigilance domain. This video will be about noticing the second layer, person's exaggerated view about fairness. And also we will talk about the schema and domain focus techniques to reduce the anxiety. Before the techniques, let's have a look at a case example, George. He is a surgeon and came to my office for his high level of anxiety and avoidance with some of his patients. Hello George. How may I help you? A client of mine sued me for malpractice. Nothing found wrong with me. But I still don't take similar cases even it has been two years since the court. Sorry to hear that even it ended well. What is the problem then? When a similar case comes I forward them to my colleagues. If I had to do the operation, I feel really bad. Every night I am calling the clinic and asking every details about the patients to the on-guard nurse. It is like I am there all the time. I see. What do you think if you accept and operate the kind of patients with similar diagnosis? A similar complication can occur any time. And I may not be lucky this time. And what do you think if a complication occurs and you are sued again? I can lose my job and my license. I can go in jail. Would you fear the same way if you would lose your license because of a political reason for example? Not that much. I have nothing to do with that. But I am responsible for the complication. What is the difference between losing your license by being responsible for a complication and by a political reason? Well, if I am guilty I can't forgive myself for not being more careful. The thought of this might have not be happened would kill me. We checked the worst case scenario with Socratic questioning. At first he looked like being afraid of losing his medical license because of being sued again. But asking more about the way of losing his license, we see that he is afraid of this situation if he is responsible for it. If he is not, he says he would cope with it much better. His colleague who is the head of the operation team has the same risk of being sued. But he seems like doing better. Same risk but different responses. We'll see the reason later. Let's have a look at another example of a client who has checking type of obsessive compulsive disorder. I am checking the door the iron and the oven. I have been treated with medicines for years. Nothing changed that much actually. Are there situations that you don't care about the door, the iron or the oven? Oh, yes. If I am already out and my sister leaves the house after me. She is a very careful person then. That you don't have to worry about the thieves or fire. Oh, no. She is the most mindless person I've ever seen. But in that case I won't be responsible. <music> Here we see that she is afraid of the robbery or fire if she is responsible for the loss or damage. If someone leaves the house after her, she can function in life better. In the next example, we'll see a client who is suffering because of a separation with her boyfriend. Please try to understand the core reason of her sadness. After our fight about his delayed messages, he said he wanted to give a break. And what do you feel now? Terrible. I messed up another relationship again. Helen, would you feel the same if the relationship ended because of another reason? Like Joe going to a very far place to work? No, I would feel much better even we separated. I would be just alone but not responsible. Here. As with the other cases, it is not the separation itself which causes the pain, but the reason of it. She thinks she is responsible for the separation. The next example is from pessimism and negativity schema. The client thinks that the positive future events will not come true if she wants them so much. My father told me that he would like to finance a London trip for us as a gift. I love London. That sounds nice. Well, not really. Since that day I am worrying about the obstacles that can stop us going there. Even I can't sleep. Wow, 
That is interesting. Do you always think in this way about the activities you will do? If I want them so much, yes. The client thinks that she has some kind of responsibility for the negative outcomes. So she tries to think negatively or at least not want them too much. There are two more examples. We'll see again the double standards that the people apply for the negative life situations. Hello Bruce. You look a little nervous. Did something happen? I wanted to pay the session beforehand. But while your secretary was authorizing my credit card, I decided to use the restroom. To optimize the time as always. I have a terrible feeling now. I hope she didn't copy my credit card. Well, I don't think so. She is retired after working in a bank for 25 years. And we are working together since 10 years. She is a super honest person as I know. What is it that makes you upset here? Is it the amount of money she can take from your credit card? No. The limit is not high with the card. I gave it to her with my hands and left them alone in the waiting room. Would you feel different if she took it from your suitcase secretly? Absolutely. I wouldn't be responsible for that. It would be her immorality. I gave the real estate agent a hard time. I called him a pimp. He should have warned me that he wouldn't sell the house quick enough. I understand that not being able to make $10,000 profit with this investment makes you feel economically weak. Of course. I have kids to take care of. I have to be careful about the money. I know you believe in God and His orders. How about resignation with this situation? Would you feel the same if you had lost your house in a fire? That would be different. It is destiny then. I can lose my $100,000 house, but God will give me power to earn it again. But this is my fault. How did I trust that bastard? Stupid me. In all examples we saw the clients were talking about their part of the reasons of the negative events. A complication, fire, robbery, separation or other losses. Dealing with the anxiety problems, it looks reasonable to work on the increased perception of the catastrophes. Cognitive and behavioral techniques are highly effective on these. Our clinical observations and preliminary findings say that the cognitive bias about the responsibility of the person about the situation has an effect on the level of anxiety. We find it important to focus on the fairness side, as well as focusing on the increased perception of the negative events. So, within the limits of this video we will continue about the techniques for two schemas mainly, self-sacrifice and punitiveness. In schema therapy, we mainly focus on four layers to change psychological problems. These are cognitive, behavioral, emotional areas and therapy relationship. Within the cognitive techniques we try to restructure the thoughts related to the schemas, and to develop a healthy voice to create distance with the schemas. Reframing the past and reattributing adult problems to schemas and modes are the other main aims. In doing so, we use evidence counter evidence, cost benefit analysis, chair work, flashcards, dysfunctional thought records and all the other cognitive techniques available. Experiential techniques are widely used in schema therapy for the change at the emotional level. For the emotional change we practice experiential exercises to vent anger and grief for the early pain. We use imagery to apply reparenting and mode change techniques. Letters to the parents, imagery dialogues between the modes, are the other techniques used in experiential work. Another layer that we work on for change, is therapy relationship. This is the relationship between therapist and the client. We focus and work on the therapy relationship to provide limited reparenting and to heal the schemas that are triggered in the sessions. Warmth, acceptance, nonverbal expressions of caring, validation, promotion of the autonomy and setting limits are some characteristics of the therapy relationship. 
The fourth layer that we work on is the behavior. We assign and rehearse behavioral and interpersonal changes related to presenting problem. The behavioral techniques are used for breaking the dysfunctional life patterns. For rehearsing we can use imagery and role play. Discussing the new ways of handling real life situations, and emphatic confrontation to push the patient to a change, are frequently used techniques. In this video we talked about case examples and the levels of change. These are our cognitive, emotional, behavioral and relational areas typically touched at most of the sessions. In the next video, we will see the application of these techniques with the self-sacrifice and punitiveness schemas. Thank you.